Okay, well, welcome everyone. So I am Marcel Pinero, and I am a new lecturer, relatively new lecturer in the Department of Biology here. And I'm going to talk about how I've been using ePortfolios uh, in this uh, large introductory biology course and some of the successes that I've had, some of the challenges as well. So just to set up the problem here, uh, I'm going to use this little picture and we're going to look at, let's imagine here's this little pot of say scum is our class and as a professor I'm going to come in and I'm going to start saying well hello class welcome and here's your syllabus and uh, in this class there's going to be a writing assignment and all of a sudden oh all those students run for the hills they do not want to do that and uh, this I think is a long-standing problem maybe not just in biology maybe across campus but as I've overheard it's been something that's uh, been dealt with for many years so this was a little uh, sound bite I heard at a departmental meeting. So when I kind of came into this and began designing this course, I, I didn't want to look for a silver bullet that would make these perfect science writers. I just wanted to kind of ease them in into not being so scared so they're not running for the hills once they see that on the syllabus. So this was my course, Biology 110, Introductory Zoology. It's a fairly large course, about 300 students, and it's required for many of the uh, honors biology programs. It's also quite a diverse cohort of students. 60% uh, are 1A students and a large portion are actually third and fourth year students as well. So there's quite, amount, uh, quite an amount of diversity. It's also very content heavy. It's usually seen as a pretty difficult course because a lot of the students don't necessarily have the experience in the language of zoology with a lot of the animals that we'll be looking at and they have a laboratory component a midterm and a final, and those midterms and finals are usually multiple choice, fairly uh, memory heavy, and it can be seen as quite difficult. So when I was trying to organize this assignment, I wanted to kind of take advantage of uh, the ePortfolio idea and have these students just write a very kind of simple reflection on a news article that has to do with zoology, allow them to put what we're doing uh, in class into, into a greater context. And I would be pushing these articles at them using, say, a Twitter feed for the course as well, so there'd be lots of opportunities to find these articles. And I would give them, say, 200 words to just write a personal reflection and a summary of the article, and I would give them, say, a guiding question, like, how has this changed your view of zoology? Some students don't necessarily have the first idea of what zoology is. They think it has to do with someone working in a zoo, so it helps them to put things into context. And I really wanted to point out that the goal here for them is that this is low-hanging fruit. There's a, you know, a difficult midterm, a difficult final, so this is really a proportion of their marks, and I gave it about 5% of their final mark, is just a simple personal reflection that they would write. And I would spread this out over multiple assignments throughout the term so that even if they couldn't finish one on time or they didn't have the time to do it, it's not the end of the world. They can still make up the majority of the, that 5%. I also gave them a fairly straightforward and simple rubric uh, looking at exactly what I wanted them to have and uh, a small portion of that was spelling and grammar. So get them eased into the idea of writing and not running away. So here's a nice little example that a student did. So this was their ePortfolio, one of the assignments. They also had uh, a main page that introduced themselves and they really took uh, ownership of this space which is going to come in uh, later on in this little talk to be exactly what I wanted them to do. So they're able to look at that assignment, uh, look at that article, provide a little summary, show a little picture of pufferfish courtship, which is what they were talking about in this assignment. So it really exemplified some of the goals I had when I designed this assignment. And that was easing the students into writing, but also giving me a small amount of text that I could pretty quickly read over and give them some basic uh, feedback as to how to improve their writing. And then the big one is promoting science literacy, actually getting an idea of how uh, the material we're covering in class is going to fit into the greater world of, say, research in zoology and maybe outside of zoology into other areas of biology as well. So uh, in many cases, it really was successful at meeting my goals. But there were quite a few challenges, and the first one is hyperbole. So this was something I had to address in class. And here's another example of a well-done assignment. So this student talked about uh, songbird species, the great tit, so they were being a little bit cheeky with their article selection. But anyways, they looked at these birds, and they were looking at how personality types amongst the birds influenced how they were 
organizing themselves in the community and they made the connection that hey if we're looking at conservation knowing how the birds are going to uh, react and how different personalities in birds will lead them to do different things uh, would help us to control these populations so it was really great but the challenge was hyperbole and this was uh, not necessarily the majority of cases where I would see something like this. I would see something like, hey, I talked about the songbird species, the great tit. What a great discovery. We can cure every disease knowing how different types of birds fly around. We can feed the world and absolutely amazing. So, you know, I kind of considered maybe this is what they expected me to be looking for. I wasn't exactly sure, but I had to obviously bring it up in lecture and say, you know, ease back on some of this uh, bombastic language. Now of course uh, there's about 300 students in the class like I said in multiple assignments so there was a quite uh, large amount of marking that I had to do and if I didn't have a reduced course load there would definitely be some problems. So marking is something that I have to address uh, when I do this again in the future. And then the, uh, the next challenge is this idea of student buy-in and dealing with this learn interface. So I showed you before the example where they really took advantage of the interface and made that nice little online space. This is an, another example from that uh, great tit personality person and what they did here is they basically used it as just a spot to kind of dump their word file. So that had to do with some of the technical uh, difficulties of trying to set up the space and learn. And really at the end of the day, you know, my goal was for them to actually write something, not necessarily to create an online space. So I accepted this, but in the future it might be something to uh, consider when I have this assignment again. So moving forward, uh, I think that kind of dealing with that learn difficulty uh, challenge, giving them some kind of template that they can easily use and modify to create that ownership of the space I think would really be beneficial uh, and then to ease up on some of the marking some of this peer marking software that's starting to be uh, implemented in Learn would be advantageous as well to look into. And then I mentioned before that taking ownership is really going to be beneficial in the long term so these ePortfolio spaces students will uh, have with them as they continue through their career here at the uh, University of Waterloo. So in the future I'm going to be teaching uh, an upper year invertebrate zoology course that could have some of these students again and if they have these ePortfolio assignments uh, that they have from first year it would be a really great um, opportunity to design an assignment that looks back on how they thought uh, as they began their careers here and how it's changed over time. And hey, you know, we can look at how their writing's changed and maybe improved as well if we're looking back at how well uh, we're promoting science writing. So that's how I used ePortfolios. I think there's some great benefits that we can have to promote and ease students into writing. Some challenges too, but I think it's really a, a useful tool that can be implemented fairly easily in even a large class.